The next type of reaction that we're going to discuss that deals with the alpha carbon of the carbonyl is halogenation of the alpha carbon. So certain types of carbonyl compounds such as ketones can be halogenated at the alpha position either under acidic or under basic conditions. Now these two types of conditions however undergo different types of reactions. They have different types of reaction mechanisms and produce different types of products as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin with the simple case acidic condition let's suppose we have a ketone as shown on the board and we place it into a solution that is acidic that contains a bunch of H ions so these H ions are carried by the hydronium we're assuming the solvent is water so basically what happens our hydronium in step one acts as the Lewis acid and this oxygen of our carbonyl bond acts as our Lewis base. The oxygen is protonated and this hydronium is deprotonated. So we produce water as well as this intermediate on which we have the delocalization of positive charge between this oxygen and this carbon. Now in the second step we have the water molecule that is produced basically acts as the Lewis base and it takes takes away the H atom found on the alpha carbon. So if we take away one of these H's on the alpha carbon, this bond forms a double bond, a pi bond between these two carbons and we form our hydronium ion as well as our enol. So we regenerate this acid and we form our enol. And in the next step, we take our halogen. So let's suppose the halogen in this case is iodine, but we can also use chlorine or bromine. So basically this enol acts as a nucleophile and and via an SN2 reaction, this pi bond attacks one of these iodides, displacing the other one, so we form this resonance stabilized intermediate in which we have a carbon iodide bond. So basically, one of the H atoms has now been replaced with our iodide. And notice we have resonance stabilization, we have the delocalization of positive charge charge among these two atoms here. Now, once this leaves, we have an iodide that is floating around and when that iodide approaches this oxygen with the positive charge, it basically takes away that H atom and we form the final product as well as HI. Now, this final product is known as alpha ida carbonyl compound. It basically is a compound in which we replaced one of the the alpha hydrogens with our iodide and no further reaction takes place. So once again mixing the ketone with an acid solution in the presence of a halogen let's say iodine leads to the formation of alpha ida carbonyl on which only one of the H atoms on the alpha position has been replaced with our halogen and notice that no further halogenation reaction of the alpha position actually takes place under a city conditions. The question is why? Why doesn't this molecule react further in the same exact fashion to replace these two H's with our halogen? So let's take a look at the hypothetical reaction between this molecule here and our hydronium uh, atom. So let's suppose that our hydronium reacts with the alpha ida carbon and let's see what happens in this resonance stabilized structure. Let's see why this reaction actually does not take place. So notice the most important difference between this compound and this compound is that on this compound this carbon the alpha carbon now contains an electron withdrawing group we have the iodide group which is electronegative and it will pull away electrons 
from this alpha carbon, placing a partial positive charge on that carbon. So when the hydronium protonates the oxygen and we form this resonance stabilized intermediate, we're going to have a very large or relatively large electric dipole moment that will place a partial positive charge on this alpha carbon and a partial negative charge on this iodide. And notice when this intermediate is formed, one of these structures has a full positive charge on the carbon. So we have two positive charges, two of the same type of charges right next to one another and this will greatly destabilize this intermediate and that's exactly why this reaction does not take place because even though this is resonance stabilized there is a lot of electrostatic repulsion that exists between these two carbons as a result of this electron withdrawing halogen group so once again if the hydronium actually protonates the oxygen once more, it places a positive charge on the carbon adjacent to the carbon attached to our iodide. The iodide is electron withdrawing and will place a partial positive charge on the alpha carbon. And because our two charges are right next to one another, this will greatly increase the electrostatic repulsion and this molecule molecule will not be thermodynamically favored and that's exactly why this alpha iodide carbonyl does not react further to basically uh, replace these two H's with our iodides. So, this takes place under acidic conditions. This is our reaction mechanism and under acidic conditions, we basically form this molecule in which only one of the H atoms on the alpha position have been replaced with our halogen. Now let's move on to our basic conditions. The basic conditions are a bit more complicated and we'll see why in just a moment. So under basic conditions, the reaction is different and all of the alpha hydrogens are replaced with halogens. In fact, when we replace all those H's with the halogens, another reaction takes place known as the haloform formation reaction, as we'll see in just a moment. So. Let's begin with our reaction mechanism. So we begin with the same exact ketone as before, but now because we're under basic conditions, we replace our hydronium with our hydroxide. So hydroxide basically takes away one of the H atoms on the alpha carbon and we form the following enolate. Notice in this case, we did not form the enolate. We formed the enol and the enol acted as the nucleophile. So under acidic conditions, we form the enol and the enol acts as the nucleophile displacing our iodide. But in this case, we produce the resonance stabilized enolate and it's the enolate that acts as our nucleophile. So in step two, we have the iodine. Once again, we could have used chlorine, uh, chlorine or bromine. In this case, I used iodine. Basically, these two electrons on the carbon of this enolate act as a nucleophile attacking this iodide in an SN2 fashion forming a bond between carbon and I, displacing this I died here. So we basically form this molecule. We form our alpha ida carbonyl in a two-step mechanism. Now, in the next step, we have our hydroxide once again taken off the second alpha hydrogen and we place and, and we form this resonance stabilized intermediate. Now, what exactly is the difference between this resonance stabilized intermediate and this one here? So in this one, the first step is the protonation of the oxygen because we are under acidic condition and that 
that places a positive charge on this carbon of our molecule. But in this case, we are under basic conditions. So the H of our alpha carbon is deprotonated and we place not a positive, but a negative charge. And we place that negative charge on this oxygen as well as on this carbon here. Now placing a negative charge, a full negative charge on this carbon, we have an electron withdrawing group attached to this carbon that we attached in step number two. So what this electron withdrawing group will do is actually stabilize this intermediate that is formed because it will pull away some of this electron density off of the carbon and onto this iodide atom. So this electric dipole moment that points from the carbon to the iodide in this case under basic conditions is actually stabilizing while in this case it is not stable because of because of having our uh, negative charge we actually have a positive charge as shown so in this case we have stabilization as a result of the electric dipole moment and once this is formed in the same way that this acted as a nucleophile this too will act as a nucleophile using these two electrons to kick off one of our iodide and form a bond with the second iodide. So we basically replace two H atoms with two halogens. Now in the next step, we have the same step taking place. Once again, the hydroxide takes away the final alpha hydrogen, once again forming this resonant stabilized intermediate that is even more stabilized because it has two electron withdrawing groups. So now those two electron withdrawing groups uh, basically take away some of that electron density from the carbon and stabilize it. And in the final step of this six step process, we have this final carbon acting as a nucleophile, displacing our iodide and forming this molecule, which is called alpha, alpha, alpha triiodo carbonyl compound. So we basically replaced all the H atoms, the alpha uh, hydrogens with our halogens, in this case, the iodide atoms. Now, this is not the final product of this reaction. So we have a reaction that is commonly known as the haliform formation take place. Basically, because we are under acidic conditions and because we have this uh, carbonyl group, this carbonyl group will react with our hydroxide, the base that is present in our solution. And the base will attack this carbonyl carbon in a nucleophilic fashion, displacing the pi bond and placing it onto this oxygen. And we form the following molecule. Now in the next step, in step eight, we basically have this pi bond reforming, but now instead of kicking off this group, we kick off this group here. So basically we have this bond forming, the pi bond forming, kicking off this molecule and forming this molecule here. Now, why does this form? Well, this is stabilized because the carbon bears a negative charge, but the carbon contains three electron withdrawing groups so actually the charge on this carbon is not a full pot is not a full negative charge it's slightly less so we see that this is stabilized by the electron withdrawing groups now we basically have this carboxylic acid. Now basically this is a very good Lewis acid so it will take off the hydrogen attached to this oxygen and we form this molecule here as well as this molecule which is known as the haliform. And because in this case our halogen is iodine, this is iodoform. So basically this entire reaction is known as halogen formation reaction and it only takes place under basic conditions. Now, the final step, step 10, is basically we add some type of acid. Let's suppose the... <clears throat> 
Let's suppose we add the hydronium acid and the hydronium acid protonates this oxygen forming a carboxylic acid. So the final product of our basic condition is a carboxylic acid as well as this haliform.